you guilty of the crime as an accomplice. The court sentences you to the penitentiary for 10 years. Hello. Give me a rewrite, man. Joe? Can't talk it. Julie Saunders got 10 years. Yeah, yeah. I know. Sure, sure it's a tough break. But y'all goes to prove you never could tell what'll come into this town on the noon bus. Logo Park, ten minutes. This isn't your stop, sir. I know that. You can let us know when you get located. dinner, wasn't it? Yes, it was very nice. Mm -hmm. Cost me $16.43. Oh, not including the tip. Uh, but money's no object to me when I really go for a girl. Where to? Uh, 411 Hawthorne. Got some rare books I want you to see. That's the other side of Mason Street, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Listen, Harry, I really would like to go home. Oh, now, come on, baby. Don't be that way. Take it easy, Harry. Driver. Would you take me to 309 Elm Street, please? Yes, ma'am. Where's that? Well, it's, it's back about two miles. You'll have to turn around. Hey, now, wait a minute. Don't turn around. Who's paying for this cab? I said drive to Hawthorne. Look, Harry, 
I appreciate your company, and I've enjoyed the dinner, every penny of it. But I'm not in the mood to see any of your rare books this evening. Driver, take me to Elm Street. Well, I didn't think you were that kind of a girl. Oh, now, don't be antisocial, honey. Uh, drive to Hawthorne. Elm Street. I said Hawthorne. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. This ain't Hawthorne. Look, I can't go in two directions at once. One of you better get another cab. Come on. Get out. You can't do this to me. I'll report you. I'll, I'll have you fired. You better get another cab. Don't worry about your job. He can't do anything. He's just a blowhard. Driver, Elm Street's back the other way. I know that. We're going to stop for a cup of coffee. You don't talk very much, do you, Steve? I've been thinking. What about? Does a girl like you get mixed up with that kind of a guy? I guess I just have a knack for meeting the wrong kind of people. Uh, wait a minute. I'm the man who rescued you, remember? <laughs> I didn't mean you. Thanks. You, uh, you live alone? No. I'm an aunt. Like it? Not particularly. Why do you do it, then? You wouldn't understand. I know one thing. I don't understand anyone doing anything they don't like to do. Are you doing what you want to do? Driving a hack? Sure, for the time being. If I hadn't been driving a cab, I couldn't have come along at just the right moment. Oh, I could have handled Harry all right. I didn't mean that. I was thinking about my meeting you. Here's to our meeting. It might be more important than you think. Expensive cup of coffee. It cost me ten cents. But when I go for a girl, money's no object. <laughs> that must have sounded pretty silly to you. Yeah, it did. Besides, I don't like drunks. I'm glad I met you, Steve. You're different. Think so? What's your name? Julie Saunders. What's yours? Steve Clark. You are different. Is that you, Julie? Yes, Aunt Cora. I'll be in in a minute. Good night, Steve. Thanks for everything. Good night. Julie! How are you, Aunt Cora? How do you feel? I don't know why you bother to ask. How do you expect me to feel being left alone all the time? Oh, this is the first time I've been out in a week. And with whom, may I ask? You wouldn't know it. No, I'm sure I wouldn't. I never do. When I was a girl, I had young men call at the house instead of meeting them on street corners. I wasn't ashamed of them. They were properly presented. I haven't had much opportunity to have anyone properly presented, have I, Aunt Cora? I'm sorry, Julie, if you feel that I haven't done quite enough for you. I didn't say that. I've done my best. A person either has it in them to amount to something or they haven't. If you had one ounce of ambition, you wouldn't be content with your job. If you'll recall, Aunt Cora, it was your suggestion that I quit school and start earning some money. There you go again. Always throwing up what you're doing for me. I'm glad your mother isn't alive to see how you treat me. I didn't mean it that way. I'm going to bed. I'm on the early shift tomorrow. You knew I wasn't feeling well when you went to work this morning. But that didn't make any difference to you. I had to drag myself out of bed so I could have some supper. I left the dishes. Hope you don't mind.
Good morning, Martha. Morning, Dewey. Gosh, am I tired. I didn't get in until 5.30. How was I to know the guy was a milkman? How'd your day turn out? Oh, brother, what a heel. I thought I'd met them all. You know, I could resent that. Well, hello. I didn't mean you, Steve. You know that. I, I didn't think I'd be seeing you so soon, if ever. Well, I'm a pretty hard guy to shake. There, is there anything you'd like? Just a cup of coffee. Like your work? It's all right. I don't know anything else I could do. You ought to have people waiting on you. That's funny. I thought of that, too. Hey, miss, how about a little service? Yes, sir. I'll be right back. What will you have? Mm, give me a couple of fried eggs, bacon, and coffee. Uh, uh, no, never mind the eggs. Make me bilious. I'll, uh, I'll take a stack of wheat cakes instead. No, no, no. I better not have the wheat cakes not on my diet. Mm, give me a bowl of cornflakes. Oh, uh, and uh, instead of coffee, better make that a cup of tea. Hey, Martha. Look, I'm not working tonight. I'm not either. Will you tell Julie I'll pick her up at her house at 8 o'clock? Oh, I'll be glad to. Tell me you were going out, didn't I? I guess I forgot. So I'm to be left all alone again. Please, Aunt Cora. He's somebody special. Please try to be nice to him. And I'm not special. I don't count for anything at all. Don't worry, we won't be out too late. You don't look so bad yourself. Catch you good. We're going places. I know you planned on going out this evening. It's perfectly all right with me. What a horrible thing to say, Julie. I'm sure Mr. Clark has no intentions of leaving. It must be a fuse. Where's the fuse box? I'll fix it. It's in the attic. Got a match? Here's a candle. I'll show you where to go. door on the left.
glad you're staying in tonight, Julie. I really am not feeling very well. There's nothing in the world wrong with you except that you're frightful. How dare you say such a thing to me? I sacrificed my life to give you a good home. And do you appreciate it? You're just waiting for the chance to leave me. You'd marry the first man who'd ask you. You're not here because you love me. You're just putting up with me, waiting for me to die. Get out of my sight. I'm so terribly sorry. What's there to be sorry for? I understand. You don't know her, Steve. She's selfish, just a bitter old woman. She's unhappy and she doesn't want anybody else to be happy. Does she treat all of her relatives like that? I'm the only one that's left. I've tried to get along with her. I feel sorry for Aunt Cora. Time and time again, I made up my mind to leave, to go to another city to lead my own life. But I just can't bring myself to do it. The thought of her here alone funny part of it is that she accuses me of waiting for her to die so I could inherit this house. If she knew how I hated this house. But you do like me, don't you, Julie? I, I don't know. Last night you said I was different. You are different. Of course I am. I'm going places. Yes, yeah, I think you are. Want to come along, Julie? You need me, Julie. Need me just like I need you. I know what you're thinking. I'll tell you a secret. People still get married. I'll only charge you half fare. <laughs> Where to, Mrs. Clark? Any place. I'm on my honeymoon. Well, of course it is. So am I. Let's go together. <laughs> you know, I, I've got a confession to make, Julie. I wasn't able to get reservations at the hotel. Gee, I, I hate to take you to that dinky little room of mine. It hasn't even got a threshold to carry you over. Oh, darling, I never like the threshold anyhow. I, uh, I wonder how Aunt Cora's going to take all this. Oh, <laughs> it'll be a terrible shock, but she'll get over it. I suppose so. Uh, there's another thing, Julie. I, maybe I should have told you this before. There was a girl. Steve, I don't care anything about the past. I'm only interested in our future. I want you to know this. You see, I've been married before, Julie. It was just one of those things that didn't work out. Maybe it was my fault. How long have you been divorced? A year ago this month. Well, I'm glad that's off my chest. Hey, it's time for me to check in. I won't be but a minute. Steve Clark, please. What do you expect him? Yeah, I see. Will you give him a message? Ask him to call Capital 17132 at once. It's very important. I know what you meant when you said you needed me. But don't worry, darling. There are a lot of things I can do with this little place. We can put chintz at the windows. But we'll have to get a new slip cover for the dad and for them. Oh, darling. I'm afraid you'll have to find some other place to put your socks. <laughs> do you have a stove? Sure, behind that curtain there. There's a note on your door. See what it is, will you? You are to call Capital 17132. It's very important. That's funny. It's my lawyer. Hello, George. This is Steve Clark. What's on your mind? Fishing? No, I don't think so. I haven't got time. Sure, I feel fine. I just got married. What, 
What's the matter with you? Are you kidding? What are you trying to do? Make a bigger mist out of me? Well, that's impossible. Well, I still can't believe it. Yeah? Yeah, I see. All right, George. Come back. What's the matter, Steve? Well, I can't understand it. I was certain my divorce was fine. I don't see how I could have missed it a month. I'm going to go see that lawyer. I'll go with you. No, I, I, I'd rather you didn't. It might be embarrassing for you. Oh, Steve. Julie, now it's going to be all right. No, no, you keep it. We'll be using it again. <laughs> Julie, I know how you hate to go back to Aunt Cora's. But, but at worst, it'll only be for a little while. I'll see you every day. I won't even give you a chance to miss me. What's the matter, Julie? You haven't said a word all evening. I guess I haven't given her much chance to talk. I'm afraid I've kind of monopolized the conversation. You're a good cook, Mrs. Hudson. Well, I've been at it a long time. I do hope you plan to stay in town, Mr. Clark. Well, I certainly do, if you'll invite me to dinner again. Of course. It's nice to be appreciated. Don't make my teeth too strong. Now, here, I'll help you. Why shouldn't she? I did. Are you sorry, honey? I guess I should understand, but everything happened so fast. I'm, I'm still in a daze. I'm glad I'm forgiven. Here, make yourself useful. Pour the hot water in the cup. The tea bags are over there. All right. Stand up. Don't make it too strong. Right. Two quarts of milk and two dozen eggs, and be sure that they're fresh. Oh, Steve, <laughs> I didn't know it was you. Well, at least I don't have to worry about the milk, man. <laughs> I think you can spare me a cup of coffee. Help yourself. I have to take Aunt Cora to breakfast. What's the matter with her? Nothing serious. She just feels like being lazy, I guess. Oh, that's great if you can get away with it. I'll be glad when we get a place of our own. It won't be long now. I've got an apartment all picked out. Oh? Where is it? Oh, it's a surprise. Got a threshold and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have to go. Remember, I've got a kiss coming. I won't forget. I don't know what seems to be the matter with me this morning. I feel so drowsy. Perhaps you'll feel better after you've had your breakfast. I felt like this in Zimmer last night. Here. Don't leave me, Julie. Drink your grapefruit juice. Oh, oh yes. Oh, my heart. Maybe I'd better stay at home. Oh, I don't know. I'd better go call Dr. Brown. Hello. Hello, 
Dr. Brown's office. This is Miss... Who are you calling? Dr. Brown. Aunt Cora's ill. Oh, she doesn't need a doctor. But you don't understand. She's really sick this time. I'm afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. She doesn't need a doctor. But Steve, she might die. What's so terrible about death? We all have to die sometimes. You don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. Listen, Julie. You said I was different. And I am. I... I don't figure things the way most people do. I'll take Aunt Cora, for instance. She's old. She's no good to anyone in the world. She's unhappy, and she's made you unhappy. There's no reason for her to live. So I... Well, I... fixed her tea last night and her grapefruit juice this morning. You're crazy. Don't say that. Don't ever say that again. Anyway, uh, what's so crazy about getting rid of a useless old woman when it gives us everything we've ever wanted? What do you mean? Listen, Julie. Listen carefully. I've got $200,000 in a safety deposit box downtown. There are two reasons why I can't touch it. One is the cops might start asking questions. The other is a guy by the name of Rogers. Uh, now, you hate your aunt. And I've got all that money I can't touch. It's also simple, Julie. If you just play it smart. You know, you know how most guys get picked up? They pull a job, and, and then they can't wait to start spending the dough, but not me. That's the reason I came to this town, so I could figure a legitimate angle. And now I've got it. When that car dies, everything in this house goes to you. We plant the money in that trunk upstairs in the attic. Everybody thinks she's just an eccentric old woman who hoarded her money. Maybe they even think your uncle left it to her. Think of it, Julie. Two hundred thousand dollars. We're free. We can go places together. What do you want? Name it. Police headquarters. Don't forget to tell them you served it to her. I'm not your wife. Oh, yes, you are. That line about the divorce was just one of my bright ideas. You see, I had to get you back here in the house with Aunt Cora. Murderer. Listen, Julie. Get this straight. What I have, I keep. That goes for the money, and it goes for you. Julie. I hate to bother you, but I'm in the middle of the cake and ran out of eggs. Could you spare a couple? Of course. Help yourself. <laughs> Nothing like a good neighbor. What are you doing home? My aunt isn't feeling very well. She's staying in bed this morning. <laughs> Too bad. What's the matter with her? Nothing, really. It's nothing. Cora Hudson in bed at this hour. She must be sick. Mrs. Ferguson. May I come in? Who is it? It's me, Miss Ferguson. Hi. Julie said you're not feeling well. Thought I'd come up and see if there's anything I can do. I don't think so. Where do you hurt? All over. Did you send for a doctor? Julie did. Oh, I wish you'd hurry up. Who'd she call? Dr. Brown. Dr. Brown, that quack. Never you mind. I'll get my doctor. He'll come right away. Doc Brown's no more than a vet. Dr. 
ground. Who's the idea? Makes me mad in a wet pink. Your aunt's sick of new things. Dr. Wagner's office? I'd like to talk to Dr. Wagner. Dr. Wagner? This is Miss Ferguson. You know, you know Miss Ferguson had the operation five years ago. Well, Dr. Wagner, I'm awful worried about my neighbor, Miss Who. What? Yes, Miss Hudson, next door, she's awful sick. You don't look too well yourself. Now, don't worry about your aunt. She'll be all right. Goodbye. Goodbye. You get prescription pills, and I'll stay with your Aunt Cora. You've got to get hold of yourself, or you'll be sick, too. Taxi, miss. Taxi. You shouldn't have left that Cora alone. Mrs. Ferguson is with her. She's the woman from next door. Have you gone crazy? But I couldn't help it. I told you not to call a doctor. But I didn't. You're lying. I'm not. You've got to believe me. Mrs. Ferguson insisted upon calling one. If I tried to stop her, she would have thought something was wrong. Maybe you're right. What did the doctor say? He diagnosed her condition as a heart ailment. Where's the prescription? Unwrap it. Oh, did you tell us? I'm afraid it's a little too late to do that core any good. You could have knocked me over with the feather when we found all that money. It. You wouldn't think a thing like that could happen to that girl. She was just like anybody else. Why didn't it happen to me? Well, it won't do her any good now. Her niece, Julie Saunders, gets all the dough. <laughs> what a lucky gal. Didn't you have any idea the money was there? No. What do you intend to do with it all? I don't know yet. Are you the only heir, as far as I know? Where did you go to school? How long have you lived here? Do you work for a living? Are you planning to get married? Please leave me alone. <laughs> We'll request the court to appoint you executrix without bond, as stipulated in your aunt's will. It's just routine. Now, when you get the certified copies of letters testamentary, you take them to your bank, and they'll deposit the funds of the estate to your account. Be sure you keep a record of any bills or debts you pay. This may sound like a line, but... Haven't I met you someplace before? No, I don't believe so. At the athletic club? No, I've never been there. Oh. It'll take a few months to probate the will. That's to protect creditors or any others who might have a claim against the estate. I know. The Winthrop's. That's where we met. No, I've never been invited to their house. Guess I need a memory course. Oh, yes. Uh, you can draw about $3,100 as executrix. That should carry you over until you get your inheritance. Mr. Harper... Yes. No, I, I don't believe you can help me. Well, I'd do anything I can. Don't forget I'm your lawyer. I won't forget. Thank you very much. Here's a bill you'll want to take care of as soon as possible. From the mortuary. I see you had your aunt cremated. Yes, it was her last request. From Dr. Wagner, two visits. Your aunt wasn't sick very long. No, she wasn't. I'm sorry I didn't have the opportunity to know her better. 
Mr. Harper, we've never met. But I think I can tell you where you've seen me. You like your malt and milk with lots of whipped cream and lots of chocolate. What? How did you know that? I'm the girl who served them to you. I work in the malt shop around the corner. Oh, so that's where it was. <laughs> I've not only a bad memory, but I should have my eyes examined. <laughs> I guess it's just my fondness for malts that made me overlook you. I'll try to make up for being so stupid. You know, you've probably started a vogue. I'll bet half the people in town are tearing up their houses trying to find a hidden fortune. Was there anything else you wanted to see me about? Well, just one more thing. Yes? Will you have dinner with me sometime? Sometime. Goodbye, Mr. Harper. Thank you. Goodbye, Miss Saunders. Take a few months. What do you have, miss? Ginger ale, please. Why the delay? We have to wait for the probate. about you. Where are you going? Well, I was going home. Well, if you don't have to take a cab, I can drive you. Better call out your way. Well, I wouldn't dream of putting you to all that trouble. Why? No trouble at all. Well, I, I was going to the malt shop a minute. Well, I was headed there, too. I want to pick up a box of candy for the wife. Of vanilla ice cream. How about you? I don't believe I care for anything, thank you. Julie's like me. She can dish it out, but she can't take it. I I used to work here. Martha, this is Dr. Wagner. He took care of my Aunt Cora. How do you do? How do you do?
I told you to stay away from everybody. I was getting in the cab, Steve. I met Dr. Wagner. He insisted upon bringing me home. I told you to wait. I couldn't help it. That would only have made him more suspicious. What do you mean, more suspicious? Oh, I'm sure he suspects there's something wrong. What did he say? Well, it wasn't what he said. It was the way he looked at me. Oh. The way he looked at you. Well, look, you can't fall to pieces every time somebody looks at you. I planned this thing. Nothing's going to go wrong. The doctor signed the death certificate. The body's been cremated. It's a little late for them to start getting ideas. Answer it. Miss Judy Saunders? Hi. I'm afraid you've made some of... talk to me until this someone shows up. I'll try to conceal my jealousy. You know, I've thought of you almost constantly since you left the office. Should I be flattered? Definitely. And I'll tell you something else, too. I have to call for you, miss. Oh, thank you. Hello? You met the wrong guy, Julie. I've been waiting for you. Wondered what happened. Who's the man? I just sat down with him, Mr. Harper. I don't think you know him. All right. Right away. Bye. You certainly don't talk much for a woman. I have to go. Surely you can spare me a few minutes. I'm your lawyer. I really must go. Much as I'd like to stay. I know you're upset about your aunt. But there's something else bothering you. What is it? It isn't anything. I don't believe you, Julie. Sometimes it does a person a lot of good to be able to talk to someone. I'm listening. I really can't tell you now. I'll come to your office the first chance I get.
taxi's waiting, miss. Where are you going in such a hurry? I'm going home. Driver, take us to... Ladies, already given me the address. What is it you were afraid to tell me, Julie? I don't know what you're talking about. But I distinctly remember you. You must be mistaken. I don't understand. Even in my office, you started to ask me to help you do something, then changed your mind. Please! Please! I'm sorry, Julie. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks so much for bringing me home. May I come in for a few minutes? Some other time. Good night, Julie. I hope you feel better. Good night, Don. Got a match? Thank you. Take me back to town. Oh, I'm sorry, uh... The tire just went flat. Afraid I won't be able to make it. There's a cab stand down the street about a block. I hope you don't mind. It's all right. How much do I owe you? Dollar sixty. Thanks. several things I want to explain to you. Start talking. I'm sorry about what happened in the cab. But he started asking me so many questions. I, I got so nervous I didn't know what to do. Yeah? I didn't say I wanted to talk to him. You've got to believe me. Have well, I? What were you afraid to tell him? Nothing. First, I was going to ask him if we couldn't have the money sooner, but then I remembered what you told me about talking too much. That's quick thinking, baby. I've been doing a lot of thinking lately. Anything I should know? Yes, everything. We're in this together, aren't we? Are we? Yes. At first I was afraid, afraid we'd be caught, but I'm not afraid anymore. You've thought of everything. Nothing could happen to us. What made you change your mind? You. The money. Now you're being smart. You asked me once if there was anything I wanted. Told me to name it. I want to get out of this awful house, leave this town. I want to live. I want to be happy. Now, that's your name. I'll pick it up from there. You know, for a while I had my doubts about how you felt about me. Steve, you're my husband. I'll turn in the cab. Come back and we'll have a nice quiet evening at home.
You weren't going to the police, were you? No, Steve. All I want to do is get out of this. You can't get out of this any more than I can. Somebody's coming up the walk. I'm not here. Remember that. I don't know Fred Howard. Maybe you know Miss Steve Clark. There's nobody here. Save your breakfast. I just saw him come in. Where is he? Maybe you got the wrong house. Maybe. You looking for someone, Rogers? Yeah, we got a little delayed business to take care of, Fred. Go ahead. You can speak freely. Don't mind her or my little friend here. What's on your mind? I share the 200 grand. Why don't you ask Henderson? Henderson's dead, you know that. Look, Fred, we've been pals for a long time, and good pals, too. I'm sure you wouldn't pull a double cross. That's not what you told Shirley. I guess I was a little hot under the collar. I didn't realize you were hiding while the heat was on. Yeah. I'm smart, huh, Rogers? You sure are, Fred. I saw you pick up the dough when the cops got Henderson. Now that he's gone, we can split the 200 grand 50-50. You know, you're not exactly on a spot to make a deal with my little friend and me. I figured you'd show up sometime. Julie, turn the radio on. Let's have a little music. Steve, I can't do that. Would you rather leave him here? Now go on, bring the car around the side of the house. Hurry up. half a block down the street. I want you to follow me. We're going right through town, so be careful.
Maybe you're out of gas. No, I don't think so. Got the ignition on? Yes. Let me try it. The carburetor must be flooded. We'll give you a push. Thank you. Take it out of gear, lady. Companions in the Denver holdup were Ted Henderson and Fred Howard. Henderson, an escaped convict, was killed at the scene of the crime. Howard, who was believed to have the $200,000, was at one time an inmate of the state institute. Oh, yeah. Never know me, would you? They did a good job, don't you think so? Yeah. You're a funny kid, Julie. One minute you're scared, and the next you slip by a couple of cops with a stiff in the back of the car. Steve. Yeah? I don't want any part of that money. Or me. I can't go on like this. You're in love with Harper, aren't you? Yes, I am. I guess I've known that all along. I just kept thinking that... Doesn't make any difference. There's nothing I can do about it now. I'm sorry I got you into this mess, Julie. I guess it's a little late to do anything about it now. No. That's strange coming from you. Doesn't sound like it. Different again, huh? Julie, do you think people ever change? I mean... Really change down deep inside. Yeah, I think they can if they really want to. I used to think so too. But they can't. Not by themselves. They gotta have somebody to help them. Somebody who loves them. Steve, I. Somebody loved me once. My kid brother. More on the level for him, too. You know what happened to him? He tried to pick up some easy money and his friends kicked him to death in the back hall bedroom. Nobody's ever loved me since. Steve, I'm sorry. I wish I could, but I can't. Of course you can. You can't help being what you are any more than I can. I'm sorry too, Julie, but we might as well understand one another. I didn't go into this setup just for the dough. Never in my life have I told a woman I loved her. Well, I'm telling you now. And I'll do anything to keep you. Billy, Mr. Haynes, you'll have to make a claim. That was for $100, wasn't it? Yes, Mr. Harper. You can substantiate this claim? Yes, sir. <laughs> it's here someplace. Yeah. Had Hudson sign a note. I don't trust people. It's a good policy, Mr. Haynes. I'll have Miss Saunders send you a check. You loaned Mr. Hudson the money four years ago. You mean it isn't any good? Oh, it's good, all right. But the date puzzles me. This was signed shortly before his death. Uh, yeah, about a week. I almost keeled over when I heard about all that money, and I still can't believe it. Well, it was a surprise to everyone. It'd surprise old man Hudson, too, if he were alive. 
You're a rather suspicious person, Mr. Haynes. Who wouldn't be? So a bank is robbed of $200,000. And then $200,000 is found in a trunk right here in Julie's home. And then what happens? A man who is identified as one of the robbers is found murdered. And I don't think he was a tourist. Well, wait a minute. You're not trying to connect Miss Saunders with this. Oh, of course not. I don't think Julie had anything to do with it. She's a nice kid. I'm sorry, Mr. Haynes, but I have an appointment. And you think I'm wrong? Yes, I do. Mm, could be. I've been wrong many times. Yes, I'm just a suspicious old man, but uh, I'd appreciate that check as soon as possible. I'll see that you get it. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning. We've got a special job for you. Yes? I'd like this retouched and a print made of it. I see. The eyebrows should be shaped so. Remove the mustache and the scar. Is this what you want? That's exactly what I want. Yes, sir. Ever see this man? Sure. That's Steve Clark. We had to let him go. Now, if you're thinking about giving him a job, just forget it. He did less business for us than any other driver we ever had. Never could find the guy. Do you know where he lives? I imagine so. Just a minute. Yeah. You might find him at that address. I hope so. Thanks. Okay. In. Don't think so. His room is number three up the hall. Searching my room. What did he look like? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Gertie, look at my top dresser drawer and see if you find a certificate of marriage there, would you? The boyfriend's getting curious. Hello? Yeah. Okay, Gertie. Thanks. You didn't by any chance mention my name to Harper, did you? No, I didn't. Does he know you're married? No. Well, he knows it now. You know, in this game, a man's entitled to one mistake. I made mine when I didn't do something about that guy. 
Well, it's never too late. Steve, he'll go to the police. No, oh, he won't do anything to show you're in the clear. It'll take him about ten minutes to get here. Julie, I've got to talk to you. It's very... Why don't you tell me, too? I've been looking forward to meeting you for a long time, Mr. Harper, but my wife never got around to introducing us. Steve, please. Why don't you step in the other room? It's more comfortable there. We've got a lot to talk about. You, too. I'll take that marriage certificate. I'll get it. Now, what else do you know? You're Fred Howard. You're one of the men who robbed the Denver Bank of $200,000. You planted that money in Cora Hudson's trunk. What's the matter? You stuck? Let me help you. Planting the money was easy. The problem was to get it out again legitimately. So I married Julie. So she'd be implicated, couldn't testify against me. The next step was to get rid of Aunt Cora. So my wife would inherit everything in the house. I don't believe Julie had any part of it. You're right. That's my one regret. But I had to do this to a nice girl like Julie. A killer with a heart. What a novelty. Come here, Julie. Come here. Turn on the radio. No, Steve, I can't. Party. They'll disturb everyone in the neighborhood. I'll go around the side of the house, Bill. You keep your eye on the front. Remember? You know him? It's Fred Howard. Wanted for bank robbery. Murder. Why was the radio blasting? He was about to kill me. Didn't want anyone to hear the shot. Looks like his plan backfired. It's the radio that brought me in here. What's he doing here? He's my husband. I'm sorry, lady. You'll have to come with me. 